What's up guys, this is Semi-I here, long time no see. So a lot has happened in, with my PTCGO and just uh, being generally pretty busy, having covered the decks that I kind of wanted to cover. So it's been a while since I made a video, but I'm here to showcase to you now my first Legend video. So we're going to be running uh, Rayquaza, Deoxys, Legend, and Embor. So let's take a look at what these, uh, these Legend cards do. So um, Legend cards in general... Uh, they come in two varieties. Uh, the Legend can be just one Pokemon alone, like Lugia Legend and Ho-Oh Legend. And um, they can also be combination Legends, like Hyrule Groudon Legend, Suicune Entei Legend, and in this case, Rayquaza Deoxys Legend. So what the way you, you get them in play is you get both pieces into your hand, and then you can play them from your hand to create one Pokemon on the bench. Um, if the Legend piece, like in this case, has two different Pokemon, then it's going to have this clause on it that shows you um, when this Pokemon is knocked out, you, your opponent takes two prizes. So it basically becomes an EX at that point. Uh, and it does have a, a boost of uh, HP to match. Like this one's HP is 140. So other Legend pieces like 130, 120, uh, the, the single ones. So um, it becomes like an HP. And we're picking uh, Rayquaza Deoxys specifically because of two things here. So... It's going to be hard to see this card sideways, but if you can just tilt your head a little bit. He's got this Poke Body called Space Virus. It says if your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack from this legend, then you take one more prize card. So it's almost like a replica of, of the Plasma Lugia's ability that allows you to take an extra prize when you knock out something. So this works on EXs. Uh, if you knock out an EX, you take three prizes instead of two. If you knock out a uh, regular Pokemon, you take two prizes instead of one. So... Um, the other component in this in this uh, card is going to be Ozone Blaster. It does 150 damage for two fire, a lightning, and a colorless. And the text reads, discard all fire energy attacks, uh, attached to Deoxys Rayquaza Legend. So naturally, since it takes two fire, a lightning, and a colorless, we're going to be trying to speed up this process by pairing him with Embor. So Embor has got this ability, Inferno Fandango, it says as often as you like during your turn, before you attack, you may attach fire energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So if you look at the Legend piece's energy cost, he takes two fire, lightning, and colorless. That means that he can really take three fire and one lightning, and his attack is able to do 150 damage, and he takes two. It takes an extra prize on anything he KOs. So this is actually a really good, important number. Because almost every non EX Pokemon's HP is going to be either 150 or less. So you do practically one shot every non EX with uh, Ozone Buster. Um, but then how do you handle EXs, you think? Uh, well, we do run one copy of Server Bangle. And so, because, so this is the other interesting thing about Legend Pieces. So the normal rules for EXs, you know, things that give up two prizes, is that it can't. Um, Silver Bangle doesn't work on them, and it can't attack through uh, Safeguard Pokemon. So let's take a look at one of those. Suicune is always the, the easiest example. So Suicune has this ability to safeguard, prevent all effects of your attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon, Pokemon EX. Uh, a lot of decks rely on this as a wall against EX decks. And the cool thing about um, the Rayquaza Deoxys Legend is that um, it just hits through it. So... It is a non-EX Pokemon that hits a high number of damage, and it can uh, take two prizes off of the opponent's Pokemon, and it's not limited by the EX label. So it can uh, have a Bangle attached to it, it's still working, have a Silver Mirror attached to it if you want to. Um, it can hit through safe carters, it can hit through uh, practically anything that isn't stuff like uh, Clefus, uh Pokemon body that puts him to sleep and stuff like that. So there's a, there's a bunch of cool advantages that the Legend pieces that it can give you that EXs don't have. So uh, it's a really cool combination. So in this case, we're going to be using the Super Bangle to get to our magical 180 number to, to KO all the EXs in the meta. So if you KO an EX, you take three prizes. So if you can actually KO two EXs with Rayquaza Deoxys Legend, you basically uh, win the game. <laughs> Think about winning the game by beating just two Pokemon. It's It makes the deck function pretty effectively against practically everything. Plus like uh, stall decks, you know, like the ones that use Suicune, the stuff like um, things that use the uh, Bufalant, the one that has uh, 120 on EXs. Bufalant only does 60 on uh, 
the legend pieces. So once again, you can see the benefit to playing a legend over an EX in those situations. And the legend just KOs these normal Pokemon. Like you can KO and execute and take two prizes. So definitely it's got a lot of things going for it that make it worthwhile to play. The limitations of the legend pieces though is that they're not considered basic Pokemon. Uh, they're kind of considered their own type of Pokemon. And so what this means is that you won't be able to get them through Collector. You can't get them through Dual Ball. And the only way to really get them is uh, using Ultra Ball. Or there is a card. And then you can also communicate into them. If you have a Pokemon in your hand, communicate. Allow you to choose one Pokemon from your hand and then find another one from your deck to replace it. So but there's also this one. There's a card here called Legend Box. If I can spell. Okay, so Legend Box says, Reveal the top 10 cards of your deck. If you reveal both halves of a Pokemon Legend, put those cards onto your bench and attach all revealed energy cards to that Pokemon Legend. Shuffle your other cards back into your deck. And you can only play one Legend this way. So, one other thing to mention that, that plays into this card is that because there is a rule in Pokemon which states that you can't have more than four copies of a single card, and because the names of these two cards are the same, Rayquaza and Deoxys Legend, uh, Rayquaza Deoxys Legend, that means that you can't you cannot play more than four copies of either pieces. So we're actually maxed out on our Legend piece count right here by playing a two-two. So that's one of the restrictions that Legends have is that you're not able to run. 3-3 three, three lines of them. You're maxed out at 2-2 two, two lines. So that's a huge limitation. And uh, if you think about the way Legend Box works, if I let me just go ahead and show it to you again. So Legend Box says to look at the top 10 cards, but if you only have four copies of a Legend and you actually need two specific copies to get the full Legend out, uh, it actually is really inconsistent, I feel. I've, t I've tried this build with more Legend, with like even one or two Legend boxes, but every time I played it, I never really got it. So I think it's too inconsistent, and we are super tight on space as usual, so we're not going to be playing uh, Legend box in this deck, even though we're going to be running a full line of Legend cards here. Uh, if you were to run uh, a deck with two different Legends, then maybe Legend box becomes more uh, practical and viable, but at this point in our, in our, in our deck here, uh, we're not going to be needing it because it's too inconsistent. So what else do we have? Another good partner for Embor is going to be the uh, Rayquaza. So Rayquaza has this attack called uh, Dragon Burst. Rayquaza EX. Uh, discard all fire energy and or, or all basic lightning energy attached to this Pokemon and your attack does 60 damage times the number of energy cards you discarded. So uh, this is a really, really powerful attack because if you discard three fire energy you're doing 180 damage if you're discarding uh, two fire you're doing 120 damage so just for two to three energies you you do you, you have an ex ko that's an insane amount of damage and so uh that's what Rayquaza is going to be there he's going to be our backup attacker to allow us to hit those high numbers if we don't get the silver bangle because we do need silver bangle to get to 180 but the Oxus just needs uh, three energy to get to 180 instead of uh, another piece of the puzzle. So he's a cool backup attacker, um, but he is an EX, so he is limited by a lot of uh, anti-EX situations, including Suicune, including other the opponent's bangles, including their Buffalons, all that kind of stuff. So he is crippled in a way with the EX logo, but uh, his damage is there as a backup attack. Um... So we're going to be running two of those, and we're going to be running a 2-1-2 line of our Embor piece. So two Tepigs. I, I decided to, to use this promo Tepig because of the Singe attack. So if there's ever a situation where I happen to have a Tepig in the active and I can't do anything, at least in this case I can burn him with a single energy because I don't want to attach energy to Tepig. I'm not going to be using Embor to attack. But if I actually have to and it's in a clutch situation, I can use Singe to, do, to take another damage, uh, to take to, to burn the opponent, basically. Uh, the other Tepig I have is this one. Uh, I don't have two copies of this, so that's kind of why I'm splitting it 1-1. You're going to notice that they are both they both have 60 HP. Um, this one has 60, and this one has 60. So uh, there are Tepig options in uh, Legacy for 70 HP. And it's honestly a toss-up of which one you prefer. So you can see the 70 here. 
the biggest difference between 60 and 70 is going to be two retreat versus uh, one retreat. And since we do run just uh, one Keldia with uh, two float stones, I feel like one retreat is going to be more important than the extra 10 points of uh, HP. I could very well be wrong in that. You might be thinking to yourself, that's crazy, just run 70, you're going to survive an extra turn, possibly. You're absolutely right. I think it is definitely possible for that to happen. But for now, I'm going to stick with the 60s because I haven't run into a situation where I lose them because of that extra 10 damage. But uh, I have run into situations where I do need, re need to retreat them, and so that's kind of why I have the 60s there. Uh, we have the one uh, Pig Knight for 90, uh, 90 HP, and then we do have two Emboars here. So it's kind of a thin line, to be honest, for something that's so important for our deck to function. But I just could not find any space for more. Um, and so we're just going to have to stick with this. We do run two Victinis here. So he's got this attack called V-Create. If you have four or few bench Pokemon, this attack does nothing. So what that means is you're basically going to have to have a full bench of five to be able to use this attack. Uh, and he does 100 damage for 2 energy. So it's actually a really cool uh, non-EX option to take a lot of damage for very little energy against any sort of uh, Celebi Genesect decks or Verizian Genesect decks. It actually uh, one-hit KOs their deck, entire deck. So he's a cool uh, tech here. You know, he does a lot of damage for nothing, for like very little energy, but he, he does need a full bench to use it. What often happens is I'm trying to stall enough for my to get my other lines to go through, and so he's just kind of there to, to like to sponge a hit for us if we need him to. Um, sometimes in a matchup he can be useful, like I said in the Celebi Genesis matchup. Um, we're gonna skip the egg for now, and then we're going to go into Jirachi. So we do on one Jirachi. I always like having a Jirachi Jirachi option in case we're dead drawing on supporters. Um, it's so it's just really important. Sometimes you know you have fishermen here too, so. Uh, we're going to get into it later, but Fisherman allows you to get all the energy back, so we can uh, we can dual ball or ultra ball into a Jirachi to get a Fisherman if we need to for a late game, mid game uh, attack that we need. One Keldeo for Russian and Retreat, and we have two Float Stones to help us out to use his, his ability. So um, he's really good, useful to get something out of the active in case it's stuck there. He's also useful because uh, the Legend piece, the, the, the full Legend has three Retreat. <laughs> That's a lot of retreat, so we're definitely going to need float stones and Keldeo to move him around if we need to. Getting into some of the items that we have here, one computer search to get set up because uh, isn't so computer search over a dousing machine because um, in a deck like this that that basically uh, absolutely needs to set up. It has it has a more complex setup than it does have a late game situation, so that's where computer search helps because. You're going to want to use this early on to, to get set up faster. And so that's why we run a computer search over dousing machine. Um, dual ball, two of them. Let's get into the, the, the balls. <laughs> um, so there's going to be eight ways that we can manipulate our Pokemon. Tool dual balls. Uh, it says flip two coins for each head. Search your deck for a basic and show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle your deck afterwards. So he's there to help us get... Uh, Rayquaza, Tepig, and Execute for discarding Victini, Jirachi, and Keldeo. Um, we have four Ultra Balls, though. Uh, the reason why the Ultra Ball count is so high is because the Legend pieces cannot be gotten with Dual Ball. So you absolutely need Ultra Balls to get your pieces out. Um, but in playtesting, even a 2-4 line was not enough for me because I did not get set up as fast as I wanted to. So to make up for that, we're going to be running two Pokemon communication. So this communication card says, choose one Pokemon from your hand, show it to your opponent, put it in the top of your deck. If you do, search your deck for a Pokemon, show it to your opponent, and put it in your hand. So you can, just, if you had a Pokemon in your hand, you can just basically replace it for another one. And communication does work on Legends. So if you, can, if you have a dual ball and communication in your hand, you dual ball into whatever you want, and then you can communicate into a Legend piece so you are able to really help to get, like, four Ultra Balls, two Communication does help a lot to get your Legend pieces out. Uh, sometimes you'll have one of the pieces in your hand, you just need another one, and so that's where these two will come in. So um, really important, like, think about how many, this is like uh, eight cards that we're dedicating to getting Pokemon out, because that's kind of the primary way that our deck's going to function. 
a legend deck absolutely needs ways to get it out fast because it's inconsistent to be able to need two cards at the same time to play one Pokemon. So, uh, as evident by the fact that you need rare candy for an Embor. Um, so yeah, there's a huge amount of inherent inconsistency in a deck like this. So eight pieces uh, used to allow us to, to be consistent in, that, in those regards is going to be important. So that's how we are able to get our lines out. Three Junk Arm. Um, usually, in a lot of Legacy decks, you're going to run four Junk Arm, right? But in this case, um, I think that there's been there was too many times where I just needed a Pokemon out or an Energy and not an item. Uh, so instead of... And also because uh, the, the speed that we get, like how fast we can get set up will determine our match, basically. So Junk Arm is usually good after a couple of turns, and then for the rest of the match, it's really awesome. But for those first couple of turns, it's not, because there's not many cards in the discard. So that's why I have three instead of four, and I honestly haven't really been hurting to have more of them in there. So I think three is right now fine for a deck like this. Uh, now that we've gotten to this point, let's talk about why there's one execute. So in a deck like this, you ideally want two execute, right? Because you're playing three superior energy retrieval. Uh, what this does is you discard two cards from your hand and you put four basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. So remember that the legend piece, you have to discard all fire to use the attack. So you're going to be able to get the energy back from the discard using superior energy retrieval and you're going to be able to use Fisherman. So Fisherman is a supporter for that does the same thing as Superior Energy Retrieval. It says search your discard off for four basic energy cards so then your opponent put them into your hand. So uh, the basic function of the deck is you get four energy cards in the discard, one lightning, and the rest fire. And then you can superior... And then once you get Embor set up, he's a lot, he allows you to attach as many fire as you want from your hand. So you just uh, Superior... Retrieval a bunch of energy from your discard or fisherman uh, out, fisherman out a bunch of energy from your discard Then just directly manually attach them to a legend uh, and then you can just take the KO using its ozone layer or ozone buster attack so um, That's the basic function and theory of the deck, but uh, since we run three four seven ten eleven cards that need you to discard two cards from your hand that is way too many milling. That's way too much milling. And so that's where the execute is. Um, I ran one instead of two because if you think about it, right, um, you have 11 cards that force you to discard two cards from your hand. So that's 22 cards that you're discarding. But this deck, once it gets set up, doesn't really need a lot of maintenance outside of getting more energy back. So you can actually start discarding a lot of cards from your hand once you get set up. And uh, one execute lets you do that because now all of these cards only need one instead of two. And since we run eight different ways of moving around Pokemon, you can you're gonna get the execute and discard more often than not. So a superior will cost one instead of two. A computer search will cost one. A junk arm will cost one, and an ultra ball will cost one. So that makes up the discarding that we would have to otherwise do. And uh, two would be amazing, like I said, but I just don't have the space and this version has function has been functioning well so I'm not gonna mess around with the function with this deck unless I really run into a couple of bad matches where it just didn't work for me so for now I think uh, one execute is plenty you still are, are able to move your energy around well enough so um, one is fine instead of instead of two you can potentially put two if you want uh, find maybe find a cut somewhere in here but I just don't see where you would do it so that's why I have one uh, in terms of in terms of our supporters, um, when you discard a legend piece, um, the only way to really get it back is going to be super rod. And since you don't want to be discarding legend pieces, like sometimes a legend piece can be prized, and then if you try to discard another one, like you're never going to get it out. So because of that, we don't really want too much discard draw. We're going to want more shuffle draw. So what we have here is a four two two lineup: four oak, two n, and two juniper. So that's going to be eight total draw supporters, and uh, six of them are going to be shuffle supporters. So shuffle support is just not as consistent as discard support, but it is important to conserve our resources because of the amount of stuff we have to discard, first of all. And so, and then also because we can't really lose our pieces. Like if we lost an Embor early on, 
and we need to wear candy into him. Like, there's no way that we can do that without um, having them in our deck or in our hands. So it's just too many, too many bad uh, lost, too many resources lost from uh, discard draw, even though it's more uh, consistent. So rather than that, we're just going to over shuffle draw. Uh, I did skip over the rare candy, so let's go back to it. Uh, M Boar is going to be a stage two, and getting a stage two out is not that easy. So that's kind of where three rare candy come in. Um, we're going to be hopefully getting a Tepig out in turn one, and then by turn two or three, we can rare candy into an M Boar and get our deck going. So uh, that's where that's where the count is actually higher than the amount of M Boars that we have. So we don't actually we don't actually fully ex we don't actually expect to get three M Boars in play. We only expect to get one, but we have all these other pieces to make that whole thing consistent. And three rare candy, to me, feels more consistent than two by absolutely far. You know, like, no, notice we're not playing any Skyla too, so that's why the count has to be high enough for us to be to make it consistent. Um, we do run two Tropical Beach, and uh, this, like honestly, to be like I know Tropical Beach is incredibly expensive, but I just don't see this deck functioning the way. It, it does without Tropical Beach. Like you're gonna see in, our, in my matches that Beach is so important to be able to have consistency in getting set up that I would definitely not put anything else in this deck. Two Tropical Beach is a must, um, practically a must. And I think, I, like I started the deck with three, but I had to make some cuts somewhere. So two is what I'm left with. But I think uh, definitely you don't want uh, anything less than two. And I think you want to have two for sure. Because you're going to see how important it is for consistency when we when we use it in the matches. If you don't know what Tropical Beach does, it's like it's a stadium card that says once during your, each player's turn, that player may draw cards until he or she has seven cards in his or her hand. And if, if he or she does, that player's turn ends. So since you're not going to be attacking in the first couple of turns, since you're trying to get involved and trying to get energy in the discard to get set up for your legend pieces... Uh, you're gonna need to use Tropical Beach those first couple of turns to really keep your keep your hand size consistent, so that you'll have all the pieces you need. So definitely two is important. Two Float Summer we talked about. One Silver Bangle we talked about. Ideally, I would want two Silver Bangle to get the chances of uh, us bangling a Legend piece higher. But one is kind of the like in terms of space, we're so limited. So ones are kind of all I have to to do. 7 energy of fire, and then 3 lightning, so 10 energy total. I started the build with 8 and 4 because it just makes the deck more consistent to draw into energy that way, but again, to get everything else consistent, um, we need to cut down a little bit, so uh, 7 and 3 is fine. So far, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, there are been, There's been a couple of matches where I didn't draw into an energy I needed, or I didn't have enough in my hand, or whatnot, but... Uh, usually in the first couple of turns, you're able to discard a couple of these, and then you're able to draw into a couple of them afterwards. And so once you get one attack off, you're going to be set up to uh, get the the superiors working. You're going to be set up to get everything else working. And so seven and three should be plenty. Uh, if you guys want to try a little higher, you know, tweak the list a little bit, go for it and uh, see how it works out and tell me about it. But yeah, and then our legend piece, we already talked about that. And so overall matchups... Um, it's been pretty good. I think once you get set up, you can really overwhelm the opponent. You know, like they can't they can't stall with their non ex basics because the legend piece will take two prizes off of them, and um, they can't like you one shot practically everything. Uh, the legend doesn't one shot exes without the bangle, but the uh, Rayquaza can, and so the Rayquaza ex can KO anything on the opponent's side as long as they have enough energy. The legend piece is there to get uh, those extra prizes if they try to stall with non EXs. Or you can even potentially get three prizes off of an EX. Like, I've had it happen where I, I take out with the bangle, like, I take out a fully powered up EX or whatever, and I take three prizes. Like, they, you know, the match could be like they take out one of my Victinis, and then they take out, like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, let's say an EX. So that's like three prizes right there. Then you just swoop in with your legend and you take them out and now you take three prizes and the matches all, all of a sudden even. So you can really have a lot. You have, you have a lot of comeback potential with this deck. And so uh, I really have, I really liked uh, playing this deck and I, I liked playing with legends because I haven't really played with them all that much so far because they're not, like I'm not a fan of them too much to be honest. Because this one's been the main one that seems to have functioned the, the best out of all of them. 
So that's kind of why I have it here. Uh, maybe in the future we might ma make some more legend decks, but uh, for now I think this is one of the the top, the cream of the crop ones. Uh, so going back to matchups, um, in the meta like Celebi Genesec, you have a lot of fire Pokemon, and then Victini does a lot does help you out and pull its weight. So it's a pretty decent matchup if you can get set up. Now if they if they have a Celebi Genesec build and they just start Lysandering up your Tepigs and stuff, like you really can't recover from that. So that that part's kind of bad. But uh, in general, if you can get set up reasonably fast, I think that you can do a lot of good damage against them. Um, in terms of, like, Darkrai, in terms of Weavile, all that stuff, like, a lot of, like, Weavile in general, you know, uh, you're going to be able to take the uh, two prizes off of, we of Weavile. And you do have the V-Create that allows you to do 100 damage that knocks them out in one turn. So you have your chances with that deck, but I think in general... When they knock out a legend, they take two prizes too. And then when you knock out the uh, Rayquaza, they take two prizes. So in general, I think that ma that deck is just kind of too fast for us. We we have a negative matchup against that deck, but uh, I think we can definitely win if we if we get set up fast enough and if we have the hands that work if we have our hands working for us, regardless of how well their hands are. I think we can potentially do stuff if we have a good hand. Um, Against any sort of like ex anti ex deck, we just destroy them, because uh, anti ex decks really rely on the ex limitations, and Lugia Legend has a lot of the ex benefits without the limitations, so um, you definitely uh, really tear through those. Uh, in terms of like um, Garbodor is going to be really bad for us, obviously, because we do rely on energy, like we rely on uh, we rely on our abilities a lot, and so Tool Scrapper is going to be obviously important in that matchup, and we don't run full counts of Junk Arms, so that's potentially a bad matchup, to be honest. Uh, one thing that you can potentially do as a way to counter those decks is notice how um, it just says to discard all fire energy. So what could potentially happen is you can attach to lightning and to fire. So when you discard all fire, you're only discarding two energy, not three. So you only need two energy after that to power it up again once you have two lightning on him. So that is one potential way to speed up the legend and not and kind of take a little bit of the stress off of our items that allow, that retrieve energy from the discard. So that's one thing to definitely keep in mind that you can you, you can play it that way if you want. Uh, put two lightning on something and then you only ever need two fires after that as long as he stays alive, obviously. But uh. Yeah, guys, this is the Legend deck. Um, in terms of expensiveness, uh, it's going to be pretty expensive. Uh, this is definitely not one of the decks that is going to be cheap because of the Tropical Beach. Because I think Tropical Beach is just such a critical part of the deck that um, these Tropical Beaches now have gone up again. I think uh, they're 100 plus now. So the other ones, the, uh, the 2012 versions... These are going to be running you around 80 plus, like 80 ish to 90 ish. But uh, yeah, if you if you have enough of them, then um, you know, definitely I think you're gonna you you can see the value that they can give you. I if you like have an old friend that used to play the game or whatever, and they you know, just don't use their binder anymore or something like that, maybe you can borrow a couple of them, you know, and, and build some like legacy decks that way. Honestly, I think you definitely would want at least two of these because a lot of legacy decks can utilize them to great benefit. Even expanded decks these days now are going back to Tropical Beach because they find that it makes decks more consistent. So uh, definitely if you can, if you have them, go ahead and pick them up. Uh, but those are expensive. The Legend pieces themselves, I was able to get a piece for eight, or eight uh, Roaring Skies. So they're about eight packs each. That it makes like 16, 17 packs for the full Legend. So again kind of expensive to have the legend pieces computer search is going to be uh, about nine to ten packs but everything else is actually fairly reasonable and kind of goes for a pack but beyond that it's not bad uh, this one I think it actually has a promo if I remember correctly but even the non promo version here is only like two or three packs so I think you can get everything reasonably cheap except for uh, the legend pieces is going to be 16 total for the full legend and then Tropical Beaches are going to be incredibly expensive. And then Computer Search Bot 9. So yeah, um, we're going to get into a couple of matches here. And um, let's uh, pick it up there. All right. Okay, we got uh, Water, Fighting, Fire, and Electric. Um, that's a, that's an interesting spread. This kind of feels like an eel deck. 
with uh, just like text set of fighting. Maybe fighting is the Tarakian. I'm not sure. Hopefully it's not Garbodor, but I didn't, I didn't see Psychic, so I think we're fine on that. Oh, with the Legend deck. It's a crazy Legend deck. <laughs> He's got two different kinds, Lugia Legend and Kyogre Groudon Legend. Okay. That's potentially interesting. I don't remember what the, their HPs are. This was a terrible start. Wow, this is such a bad start. There's a Verizian. So, wow. Okay, so he's playing the Verizian with the double draw. Back um, in the format when Legend pieces were mixed in with Black and White Era, the first couple of packs of Black and White Era, uh, this was kind of the go-to... Uh, the, uh, the little baby Pokemon's replacement. Forget the name off the top of my head. But he has the Eek Attack. Cleffa, yeah, that was a Cleffa replacement. And um, because it was able to tank a hit, was what the theory was. Let's see, let's check my legend pieces out. So, one of our drunk arms is prized. One of our superiors is prized. The legend pieces are fine. Rare candies are fine. And I think, yeah, I think we're good. Keldia, what about floatstones? We have two because we have it in our hand, so we had him in our hand. Okay, uh, we're just gonna play this. Uh, I'm just gonna leave him in the active at, at this point, and I might actually just do this to to thin down our hand a little bit. Okay, well that sucks. Okay, but we, you know, we unfortunately we don't get a rare candy with this hand, so that's take your one pro card if you want. I don't really care. Silly gets us. Okay, um, so yeah, he's really going with the old school build here of this Rizian that just draws two cards. Yep. This guy must have must be just like a really old player. Keldio Flowstone is awesome. We're just gonna end him because I don't want to lose the Embor. There's a Tepig. There's a Ultra Ball. So I think what I do here is definitely evolve. I would love to get an egg here, but um, it's fine. We're gonna evolve. And we don't have a legend piece, I don't have a Rayquaza out, unfortunately. But he hasn't done anything. And I did end him though, so maybe now he will, but we get the advantage of the tropical beach, so it's fine. Here we do have a legend we have a, a legend combo here. Um, I can uh, communicate the Embor for one half of the legend, I can Ultra Ball for the other half. And did he get it? No, he missed it. Uh, that's that happens way too often for me to really, um, uh-oh. He does have that pokey body of power, but I think he missed a lot there, so that's fine. He doesn't have a KO, does he? No, he doesn't. Okay, that's fine. Okay, there's a first half. Oh, dude, this is crazy. Now, now it's good because we can even, um... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to communicate this into an egg. No, it, we can't do that. Sorry, we have to do this. Right? Um, we do lose these two. But that's fine. Okay, we're going to do that. Um... The Jirachi is not in the deck. Crap. But I've lost two energy here. Okay. I think what I'll do is I will attach the energies. And then the beach. Woogie Legend does a lot of damage, but it does not... Um, what's the HP on this guy anyway? Let me see here. It's 130, so that's perfect for me. Alright. 
There is another fire. We do need a lightning though. And we still have we don't have a supporter again. There's another Lugia legend. Holy crap, dude. He's burning through all he's just really burning through a lot of his deck here. But they need four energy, right? And then they have to discard it. I'll discard all fire and they need three. Fire, water, and electric, yeah. So they need three and they discard them all. That's how that works. There's another one. Do I take it though? Might as well. Now, unfortunately, we're going to do this. Can anything in here help us? I think the best way to do this is to get rid of these two for superior for a dual ball maybe and then we're just gonna hold the dual ball right or maybe I should just do this I'll get the egg in my hand might as well not in that case because I keep getting tails alright but we do have the energy now so we can take a KO here And we have a superior, we have a, we have a Rayquaza. Okay, so we're going to take a KO now. Manually attach this. Rush in. And retreat. Okay. Take two prizes there. He'll take two prizes off of us. We should be able to respond because we have a superior in our hand. If he hits us with Lugia, Lugia only gives up one prize, so that's that's still two prizes. So we're, we're basically trading EX at this point. There's 200. That's fine. He loses all the energy. He has another set up there, though. So we're in the advantageous position, I think. So we will just bring up Keldeo for now. There is a super rod, and um, we will definitely be getting back the legend piece. And I guess we'll just get back a tap egg. Okay. Now we will play this for. Getting back everything. We'll bench him, I think. Because, uh, he'll t uh, I'll take a KO here. And he'll take a KO on me. It was a computer search. Ooh, actually, um, so we'll be able to take a KO next turn for sure, 100%. The question, the question is, is there a way to get out the Lugia? Is there a right way to get out the next, the last legend piece that we have? So he's taking us out, 200, okay. We can take him out and he has nothing set up, but that Poke body can help him though, is the thing. So we'll bring him up. We have a KO for sure. The question is can we get a legend out? And unfortunately, we don't have a KO on this guy with the, with the legend. Because this will get us one piece, this will get us the other piece, and we don't have enough energy. So we're going to have to actually bank on uh, Rayquaza here. So we will attach this. We're going to simply get a superior. Or maybe a fisherman. I think fisherman's probably the better play here. If it's in our deck, it's not. It's prized. 
And there's only one of these left. Okay. We have the oak. We have we do have the oak the next turn. I don't think we're gonna need another Rayquaza after this, so I think I'm just gonna actually get rid of him. Let's save the Ultra Ball. Okay, we'll get everything back. How many HP has? 120? That's enough, actually. So... We can Dragon Burst. Now he has, he cannot, he has to take a KO here or he loses, basically. Or he ends me and then that's the other option. Which would suck because I have all my energy in my hand. Um, but hopefully he doesn't end me. I mean, there's a very high chance he will though. So let's see what he does. This is an interesting. Uh, you don't usually see legends in Legacy, but uh, somehow we've run across several today. So tell me he misses it. He does. Nice. Wow, that might be the game. I think that's the game. Yeah, it is nice. Okay, so we won that one. So that was that was kind of cool to play legend versus legend. Uh, he was able to get that Lugia legend out several times, and uh, he was able to really do some damage to us. But uh, yeah, uh, that's that, and uh, we're gonna go into the next one. Okay, guys. So this next video, uh, my OBS was acting up, and it didn't record the first uh, two turns of my match. But since the match was so cool, I did want to show it to you guys. So I'm just I'm just basically here to, to tell you what happened in the first two turns. So I opened my hand with like three Ultra Balls, and um, I was able to uh, just get a couple of Pokemon in play and then get a Jirachi for a Shuffle Supporter. And then when he played his turn, he didn't do all that much. And then so it went back to my turn, and that's kind of where the video picks up. So I just wanted to let you know what happened in the beginning so you weren't too confused. But uh, that was the opening, and... Um, and yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll t pick up the video from there. Okay, so I think it sucks that, because I don't want to end him, because it seems like his hand is bad, but we might just have to. Because I need my setup, I need my legend pieces out. Okay. Did not get, we can maybe, um, so dual ball shouldn't work for legends, because this says basic. But, uh, what does this mean? I could potentially... What's in, what's in here that's valuable? Hmm. I think I'm actually just gonna leave my hand as is. Next turn what I'll do is I'll maybe get a um, communicator out to communicate this into an Embor and then I can do Juniper after. So yeah, that's what I'll do. Because he hasn't done anything this turn, so I'm fine with it. Once the Embor is out, then I can uh, hopefully I could draw into a superior. I've already lost one, though, so that's bad. And I forgot to check on the others in terms of my prizes. I'm not sure what kind of build he has. He has to... This has to be a milling deck, right? Because why would you run Galarian? Because Agron is, discards three from my deck, so it's got to be a milling deck. Some some crazy milling deck that I don't know about. Something that has a dragon in it. But the beach is down, and so since we don't run any counters, we will be able to use that all match should we ever uh, get into a dead hand and we can't attack. He's got this Ultra Ball. What else is he going to get? Because he just evolved that, so he's going to get a basic. Lost Remover, Suicune, alright. So he's going to try to wall me with Suicune, but I do have uh, a Legend that can work on it, so I'm fine. I really don't know what his build is, to be honest. Another Juniper is not what I really wanted, but um, we'll just play what we, with what we can. 
I'm actually going to leave the energy off this time because we're not going to need this for a candy now. Let's get a communicator. Okay, we're going to get the end board now, so that's amazing. We can uh, attach the energy because I can take a KO on this guy. We do have one more. Uh, maybe I'll. Yeah, we're gonna have to play it anyway. So we'll, we'll actually we'll definitely play the junk arm. But for what is the question? Um, there's a superior, but I can't use it. I guess the dual ball, because I don't see any other thing that's valuable here. I kind of don't want to get anything, but then, like, maybe I'll just get a Victini. That's fine. We'll, we'll bench him just in case, because he can do 100 damage. And he can take it, he can even take out the Suicune, so that's something worth keeping. Okay, um, here we do have now, we can get a Legend out, and I think that's what, exactly what we'll do, because we do have a Supporter in our hand. Do we have an attack? We do have an attack. Um, we'll, we'll get rid of the other Victini, because I don't think I want to... So that's the bottom half. I need the top half. Here's the top half. Legend is active. We will attach this one here. We'll bangle him. And then we will Inferno Fandango the active. And we're just going to Dragon Burst. Next turn, hopefully I can retreat him and get the Legend out to take three prizes at once. If he doesn't find a way to retreat this guy. But he probably will, considering his hand. So there is the... So we lost a Fire and Ultra Ball and Tropical Beach. Okay, that's fine with me. Those are not... Okay, so it is a mill deck. <laughs> but he can't evolve it directly again, so that's fine with me. There's a Float Stone, so he will be able to protect his Keldeo. My deck is actually pretty thin now that he's going to be milling me. He get, gets rid of it. Okay. I really don't know what the purpose of his deck is. Like, is it just milling and walls? Is that how it works? It has to be. That has to be what he's doing. He ends me, which is fine. Luckily, if I can keep this consistent, I think that Fisherman's great. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> three oaks. Since I, if I can keep this consistent, I think that we'll definitely keep ahead of the prize trade. So this is an interesting matchup. Uh, I have 14 cards left in my deck, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so he'll do three here. He'll do three there. That's that's six, and I draw one. That's seven. So half our deck is going to be milled next turn. We need to take half our prizes. Is the way that it's got to work, I think. Because uh, he could rare candy into the... Into the Agron. Now, he's not going to be able to reuse the Agron if he does that. But, um... But, yeah. So, he's going to have scoop-ups, too, I think. So, I'm surprised he's left this active. He's going to retreat now. Okay, that's fine. We'll take two prizes here. And I just hope that... I can survive enough turns to be honest. I need three turns, and I actually don't think I have three turns, <laughs> to <laughs> to be honest. So we're just gonna do that much. He's gonna end us. He might end us though. Is the thing, which really sucks. We don't play catcher because we are going for consistency instead. If he ends us, though, I think that's not too bad, because then we do get more cards in our deck, so that might be fine. Two superiors left is also good. So we didn't draw any of the three prizes that we know exists in the deck. Those discards are fine again. Now does the other rare candy is the question. Tool Scrapper. Does he have the catcher then? If he's gonna maybe try to catcher me?
10 cards left in my deck is actually... Okay, he will end me then. So, at least we... Well, we'll, we'll refresh our deck a little bit with this end, hopefully. Okay, that's good. We do have a superior. And there is the catcher. I knew it. Oh, no, dude. There's the max potion. Oh, that's really bad. Okay, well, we're going to... Tool scrapper him. Okay. How do I take enough here? So I have four cards. Two, three, four. Unfortunately, I guess I can actually uh, KO him with Rayquaza. Yeah, I could do that. I actually have to get rid of the computer search. Or wait, do I have enough though? Let me see if I actually have another float stone. There's one here. I think I want to actually do this. I think this is the right play for a float stone. And now I can KO with the Rayquaza. But unfortunately, I think that's all of the energy that we have access to. We do have three in our deck that we just saw. We have one turn, I think, left after this. So we have four fire energy left that we have access to. Okay. There's the top half, so none of those things help me. But I do have 13 cards, that's actually good, I think. Because none of his other two are evolved yet. And his Keldeo is gone. So we have four energy left in our deck that we have access to. And he has no EXs left. So I do have 60 damage just with the Rayquaza. And his HP is 90. The scary thing here is if I don't draw what I need to in my top deck here. Do I Tropical Beach and thin my deck out even more? That's the scary part. So I've lost three superiors and my Fisherman. Yeah, what about my junk arm? Two junk arms, so I might have one junk arm left. So he has evolved, he's going to end me, which actually kind of helps me, kind of. Because if I can draw two energy, that would be amazing. Please give me two energy. No. Okay, Super Rod is actually fine, too. It gives me more outs in my deck. If he doesn't devolve this, though, then he, only, he might only have one shot next turn. So he might only take out three cards the next turn. Since we don't have any way to recover the energy from the discard, I might just shuffle in three energy and just hope that the... Then I might beach after that and then hope that he doesn't find a way to mill the rest of my deck. If I do that, there'll be 13 cards left in the deck once I play the Super Rod. And I'll, and I'll draw six of those. Okay, there's one. So, 13 cards left. I will draw six of them. Well, no, I'll draw five of them if I leave the energy unattached. So, he would need two. He gets one here, but he doesn't have anything else. So, I think I do play at least this much. Uh, I'm not going to attack. I really need to take KO something with Deoxys Legend is the thing. So, dare I draw. How many, de how many de devolution sprays has he gone through? Three. That's good. One junk arm, though. And what if he ends me next turn? Uh, he's got he's gone through three ends, though. So, I think I take the risk because I can't see a way out of this without it. Okay. 
So there was a junk arm. There's eight cards left in my deck. He would need three way. He would need three of them. So he needs to devolve this. There's one. We have junk arm in our hand though, so we can get superior back. Scoop up cyclone. There's one more. Does he have the rare candy? Is the question. If he doesn't end me here, I think I have a chance. Okay, he's Oaks, so we're guaranteed a KO next turn. Unless he benches another EX, and I think we do win. If that is the case. Because he needs two Agrons, and he's not going to get it, so I think I win. That has to be enough. Yeah, that's enough. I won. Okay. <laughs> what a close and crazy match. But we have won because of the legend piece, ironically, because the legend gives us two prizes for one. We won because of that. <laughs> what a close match! This is this is an interesting. Uh, this is, was an interesting deck and an interesting opponent. At first, I didn't know what he was doing, but now I now I see it. And um, yeah, we won barely. No, the resistance. <laughs> he realized it. Oh no, dude. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> he won. GG. Dang, the resistance. Wow. He got me, dude. He got me. <laughs> oh, man. I, why do I never pay attention to resistance? Okay, so that was a great match. Uh, the resistance decided that match. That was insane. <laughs> Whoa, we were so close. We were we were just that close. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna end it on that because that was an amazing match, and <laughs> he won. <laughs> he beat us with aggro and he decked us out. So yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this deck, and then we'll see you next time.